Hello, in this video, I will talk about edible polymers. The presentation includes an introduction, then I will talk about the types of edible polymers, then something about the preparation method, and finally, some other important aspects. In this picture, we, in this slide, we could see several examples of foods that have characteristics of other uh, interesting materials. First is cheese, the second one is a candy called uh, Twizzlers, the third one is uh, chocolate mixed with peanut butter, the, uh, the fourth one shows a 3D printer making uh, an artificial meat, uh, but made of, made of uh, natural polymers, and the last one shows some uh, gels that have the shape of a flower. And, which is made of um, a polysaccharide. Well, um, food components are not commonly seen as materials because it's not classically thought this way. But if we think about their properties, we could find that they are very similar to those of other common materials such as polymers, glass, and composites. So these, in fact, are materials. Um, also, we can find that if we modify the processing conditions or add different type of types of additives or combine different types of biomaterials, we can uh, certainly modify these properties. In the example, we can see uh, first a strawberry, which is a fruit with certain characteristics, but if we boiled it and mixed mix it, mix them with pectin, uh, citric acid, and sugar, we can, uh, we could get jam, uh, and jam is a very different and interesting uh, food product compared to a strawberry, but is uh, only made with biopolymers. And these materials have important uh, characteristics that have made them important for research and food industry in recent years. For example, the, uh, their high biodegradability and the compatibility with the hum human tissues and the eco-friendliness. Also, it has applications in other areas such as agricultural industry and biomedical fields. In regarding the most important applications in the food industry, well, they, they have been used as biofilms and coating materials that helps to uh, maximize the shelf life of products, also for smart and active packagings and functional coatings. All of them are related to materials that are similar to polymers. And at the end, see, uh, although it is not uh, all only related to food industry, but most of them, food industries need to treat, for example, the water before using it uh, to, for example, clean the uh, facilities or the, the, the raw materials, no, or also to treat the waste water that, are the, that is produced due to their activity. In the image, we can see how some hydrogels made of biopolymers could help to the treatment of the polluted water that is generated in, by the industrial activity. In most cases, these hydrogels could be also regenerated and used in many cycles. Regarding the types of edible polymers, the most common way to classify them is according to the main component. And it is nice that be, uh, this because the, the same uh, most common and abundant food components are the ones that are also uh, found in the edible poly polymers and they, they include polysaccharides, proteins, and lipids. We can see some images of them. The one in the left represents the three-dimensional structure of protein. The second one represents a starch, and the third one a triglyceride, which is the main component of fats and oils. Um, 
since they are similar to the ones that are already found in foods, it is logic to think that they could be easily digested by animals and humans and that they won't uh, produce harmful effects in the organism. In this table, we can see some examples of already commercially available edible polymers. And we, then we could see that all of them are classified or uh, identified by the base polymers. And uh, all, of, all of them are either polysaccharides, proteins, or um, lipids. Well, regarding polysaccharides, in this table, we can see the most commonly used in the agricultural and food industry. And on the right, we can see the basic structure. So polysaccharides are polymers made of monosaccharides, mostly glucose, fructose, and probably galactose, arabinose, and others. Um, and their properties depends on the identity of the monosaccharides and the type of bond that is formed in from one unit to the other one. Some of these names may be familiar to us, such as cellulose derivate, alginate, uh, kitsan, and so on. Uh, in this picture, we can see uh, that the by, uh, the, the polymers that are based on starch have properties that are very similar to other polymers, especially polyethylene and similar. Uh, and it has um, very interesting characteristics that are desired in the food industry. For example, it is tasteless, odorless, so it will not modify the organolytic uh, characteristics of a food product. And also it could be a good barrier to gases. And above all of them, it is relatively cheap. In recent years, micro and nanoparticles made from polysaccharides has been studied as emulsifiers. This includes those made with cellulose, chitin, arabicum, starch, and others. Uh, as the one in the picture, it corresponds to chitin nanocrystals. These micro nanoparticles have several advantages over other um, small particles made of other materials, especially that they are, that they are biocompatible and biodegradable and when they are in, ingested by someone, they won't be harmful. So this explains why many researchers are focusing on this type of particles. Moving to proteins, we can see in this table some examples of the most commonly used uh, proteins, both the, those that are obtained from animal products and uh, those that are vegetable, uh, uh, obtained from vegetables. Um, on the right, we can see the basic structure of a protein. Uh, proteins are polymers made of amino acids, and the amino acids uh, vary one from the other according to the characteristics of the group that is represented with the letter R. Proteins have physical or chemical properties that depends on the amino acid and composition and sequence. And a protein could be very different to another one. But they have some interesting characteristics that are useful for the food industry, such as optical activity and the ability to form foam, gel, or to stabilize products. Regarding polymers based on proteins, uh, most uh, common research focus, focuses on uh, the individual or multi-layer food packaging or the production of disposable utensils that the one, as, as the one we can see in the image. 
These are straws made of proteins, so they are also biodegradable. Um, well, nowadays, we can see some of the so-called intelligent materials, most of which correspond to highly swollen microgels. So they have an important characteristic that is the high response to stimuli such as changes in pH and temperature. So they have been they, they are being studied as materials to be used in the pharmaceutical industry. Also protein and polysaccharides particles, small particles, have been utilized to prepare surfactant free pickering emulsions. So these pickering emulsions are similar to you know, traditional emulsions, but they could add, act as barriers to light, magnetism, pH changes, and also changes in temperature. Moving to lipids. In this table, as in the others, we can see the most commonly um, used in the industry lipids, which includes mostly waxes. And in the right, we can see this an example of a fatty acid, which is which uh, fatty acids are the mo most common uh, components of lipids. The lipids could be liquids. Then, in that case, they are called uh, oils or non-crystalline non solids, fats, and also are normally colorless, tasteless, odorless, which make, make them good to be used in, in food products. Also, they are lighter than water. Uh, they are insoluble in water, and that explains why most of the polymer lipid based are used as barriers to prevent water vapor loss in food products. So it has been used in food packaging, mostly composites, because polymers are normally don't uh, you, uh, get attached to food materials so well so that they could be combined with polysaccharides or with proteins to improve that but it becomes a very nice barrier for example in, in the right we could see an image of some peppers uh, yellow peppers that have been uh, treated with uh, poly uh, lipid based polymers which we could see prevents the uh, damage in the peel of the peppers. Um, waxes are, uh, as previously said, uh, the most commonly used uh, coating material. It can block gas and water vapor, or, uh, both to escape the product or to enter to it. So it, it will improve the appearance of the surface of these products. Um, if they are applied in a thin layer, such as the case of uh, an apple coated with these waxes, it could just be eaten. But if they are thick layers, they should be removed before eating them, as we can see in the image on the left of a, a cheese covered in a wax. Um, Moving to preparation methods, they could be very different uh, according to the uh, application. For example, in edible particles, the fabrication methods include uh, mechanical or chemical breakdown of molecules in order of them to become uh, exactly like micro or nanoparticles and other processes like precipitation, heat treatment, and electrosprays. In the case of edible films, methods vary a little bit. So in some cases, extrusion, for example, could be used in order to facilitate the mixture of different uh, materials. In the case of textiles, which may, uh, might or might not be an application in the food industry, sorry, uh, other methods could be used, such as electro spinning. In this image, we could see uh, some examples of 
to these processes, for example, extrusion in which the materials are moved into this uh, extruder screw, which will heat it and produce a film with a shape that one could choose. Uh, in the other processes, we also high temperatures are used, but the resulting product is different, uh, especially regarding its shape. And finally, other important aspects include the standard tests that are, are applied to these products in order to uh, identify the best use and other important properties. And in this image, we could see the most important applications in the food industry and in other industries such as biomedicine and others. Thank you for your attention.